If you want to get better at PvP and escape from Tarkov, it's more than just learning the maps and the player rotations and how to move from one place to another, but it's learning how to apply all that knowledge in raid confidently. And you might be surprised at how often just confidence can keep you alive. I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. This is another one of our lessons from Beyond the Grave, where we take a look at a clip from my stream where I died and we break down what we could have done better. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. And before we dive into this video, I would love to thank the sponsor, Skillshare. If you've been around my content for any amount of time, you know that learning has always been fundamental to me. Videos like this are learning what we could do better next time or learning a new budget gun build or about a new update to the game. Learning is fundamental to who I am, which is what makes this partnership work so well. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are tons of classes on the website for just about anything that you want to do. There's stuff if you're interested in getting started on Twitch, there's classes for that, breaking down Twitch and OBS. If you want to start editing your own gameplay, there's tons of video editing classes on multiple different video editors. I personally have always been excited and interested about photography as it's so closely related to videography, which is what I've done in the past. And I've been taking the DIY product photography class, which is actually taught by the guys over at Mango Street Lab, which is a YouTube channel that I've been watching for years. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And the annual membership ends up coming out to less than $10 a month. And on top of all that, the first thousand people that sign up using the link below will get a free trial of their premium membership. With all this stuff out of the way though, let's go ahead and dive into the video. So as always, what we'll do is we'll watch the clip back in its entirety, and then we'll kind of go through and break down what I could have done better and what I should have done. Uh, the setup here is I'm with a duo. We're on customs. We're in the dorms. I had just gotten a kill on a guy. We just dropped an enemy. I'm kind of looting him up, trying to get ready. And then my duo partner calls that there's more people coming and then all this happens. So let's take a look at the clip. I'm this middle stairs. I'm dead. Middle stairs. Middle? Dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, damn, that was close. So like we said in the beginning of this video, a lot of times it can be down to just confidence. So depending on kind of you know where you are in your Tarkov journey, when you watch that clip, you probably saw what I was talking about. We square up with these guys and I go for a flank and we see at the end that that flank worked really, really well. And a lot of times what kept tripping me up was my own confidence in my play. You know, I talk all the time about learning map knowledge, learning how to rotate, learning how to use your environment, learning different angles and gun builds and stuff like that. But applying that in raid can be super hard to do and hard to feel like you're making the right decision. And I know a lot of people in my chat have talked about the same thing, but a lot of times you can go for a play and make that play without confidence. You're always scared. Somebody heard you, somebody saw you, somebody's going to do this and you end up dying and you, at the end, I knew that I gave this up. I knew that this could have been a really awesome clip. I knew that this could have been a really awesome fight. And I felt like I threw it. And that was the frustration. Less that I died, but more that I kind of like missed this opportunity. So we can go back and watch it from the beginning. Once again, I'm just looting up. My uh, duo partner calls that there's people in the middle and he immediately dies. So I'm like, okay, 
I don't know if he knew how many there were, but now it's me versus a few guys. They're coming up the middle stairs here. I engage with this guy. These lights are well, multiple times in this fight get in my way, which is super frustrating. We engage with the guy. We know he didn't die. And we see this nade come in right at the end there. He he peeked the corner to throw a nade. So we see this nade rolling right here. So I want to get away from that. I want to get out. And this is a rough place to be on the third floor because there's no exit outside of the balcony. They've got the stairs covered. You can't really jump out of too many of these windows. Jumping out of windows would oftentimes break your legs. So, you know, you can, to my right here, you can drop down on the fence below. Uh, but I really wanted to make a play on these guys. I've been working on flanks and on kind of coming from unexpected areas. So I jump down to the snares. I open the door. And right here, you see all of this time wasted. They're still throwing grenades up there. I just saw a grenade explode. Now, it's not dumb for me to ADS down the hallway because if they push me, then I'd be ready for them. But this kind of starts the trend that happens the rest of this fight, which is me just not wanting to advance as quickly as I could. We waste a lot of time there just waiting. I'm always worried they heard the metal. They're going to hear me underneath them. I'm walking up. Now, once again, it's not a terrible thing to be ads or have your gun at the ready when you're going to make a flank because if they do hear you, you want to be ready. But I wasted a lot of time. I'm still hearing them throw grenades up there, which should be um, a tell for me that they don't know where I am if they're still nading down there. I come up here and I do the same thing. I'm just kind of waiting instead of advancing quickly. We know in Tarkov that aggression oftentimes pays out. Um, it almost is always better to be the aggressor. And all the information I have is that these guys don't know where I am. They're still throwing grenades. If they did know where I am, if they did know where I was and knew what I was doing, if one of them even had a suspicion, then when I came up, from second to third right here, I would have seen somebody holding this angle because they would have been like, okay, well, you keep throwing nades and I'm going to hold the snares in case he comes up. So the fact, all the information I have right here is that the play I made worked really, really well. And I should have super aggressively swung on these guys or at least got a nade or made a peek earlier. But we keep hesitating, hesitating. And now this is even more so. Look at this screenshot. This is exactly what you want when you make a flank on people. Exactly. They are facing the complete opposite direction and you've completely turned the fight upside down for them. But because throughout the entire time, as soon as I jumped, I really was lacking the confidence to kind of push this through. I kind of whiffed my shots. We have the light bulbs in our way. We know the second guy's down there. I kept hitting these light bulbs, blinding me. I hit the pillar a little bit. Um, I'm bleeding. I've got fractures. I pop the ETG stem and uh, I throw a bad nade. Everything kind of starts to just fall apart. If I had had more confidence, I would say that maybe on that first initial peak, I could have maybe crouched or just done like a lean peak here, like this type of peak, as opposed to peaking super wide, because then I would have been able to kind of thread right through it. Both of these guys. Now they both know. Now they're both in cover. I do get lucky right here, kind of twofold. When I make this push, the light is blocking this. I see this guy's leg. And so I want to get to cover. And luckily the light's blocking me. And because I pushed deep into this room, this guy was kind of expecting to see me run down the hall and shoot me in the back. But I was able to swing on this guy and drop him. M61 is a big boy round. Uh, and then here's another kind of area where I should have given myself a second. I've got two light bleeds, a heavy bleed, a tremor, a fracture, a blacked out limb, and my thorax isn't at 100% health. Like, yeah, I'm on painkillers, but I 100% should not have gone for an insane peak on the other guy. Unfortunately, I'm not in a room where you can jump out the window, which I think is one of the reasons why I felt like I needed to clean this play up. Because if I, if he throws a nade in here, I'm dead, right? So me taking the time to heal might not have been the best option, but even just the thorax maybe or something, I didn't really give myself time to think. At this point, I am frustrated that I missed the opportunity to get the guys when their backs were to me. So now I'm like, well, let me just try and clean this up real quick. So if I am going to push, this was a pretty nice advance where I move out, I have my gun at the ready in case he peeks, and then I go into the next cover that I can find. He shoots shots at me, so I'm hoping that now potentially I can get him on a reload or something like that. But this is a 
a third example of this is not the smart play here. Look at my health now. I have an additional light bleed and my thorax is even lower health, super close to death. So even though I'm in a bad spot here, this is not the time to be pushing unless I hear him pushing towards me. But at the end of the day, there's this is a lose-lose situation right here. I, once again, it was kind of a YOLO at this point because if I kill this guy, I have time to heal. If I don't kill this guy, he could push me mid-heal. You know, even a hemostat or something to stop these bleedings. Maybe I use my ETG or potentially earlier than I could have. This would be prime time for an ETG snim to combat these bleeds. Um, but at this point, it's a YOLO. I can't retreat because he's going to shoot me in the back. I can't really stay here and heal because he's going to throw a grenade. So I go for the push um, and I fire a little late. He gets a really nice shot on me. It's like one shot before he gets behind cover and that one shot hit me. And it doesn't really matter where. If he hits me in the face, I'm dead. If he hits me in the thorax, I'm dead. Uh, so my thought here was if I can clean this guy up with a headshot, then I could potentially win this fight. But I had put myself in a sufficiently terrible scenario that he was able to clean that up. So confidence is key. And at the end of the day, confidence doesn't always mean that it keeps you alive, but confidence gives you the ability to better break down the play and say, okay, I died because I didn't realize there was a second one, or I died because of this, as opposed to me just knowing that I whiffed this because I was hesitant. Um, and I can't see how this fight really would have gone down. So we know that uh, that's kind of just how it works in Tarkov. The aggressor is oftentimes um, the one that comes out on top. That's partially due to the net code and peeker's advantage and stuff like that. But it's also partially just a tactic of fighting by pushing deeper into a room and then turning around. You know, they're not prepared for that. And you can get the drop on people. Um, when you make a flank, you really have to kind of go all out for it because the slower that I played this flank, the more opportunity I gave for them to hear me and then react to it. So especially when you're flanking really tight, short, quick flanks like this, like not out on woods where you're running around the map. These short flanks kind of necessitate um, being really quick or else you're just giving them more of an option to be like, wait, you know, we thought he was in this room. He's not in this room anymore. Maybe he's behind us. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to be quick there. So hopefully this helped. This was a super frustrating one because it was almost really, really cool. And those are the ones that are really rough to die in when they're almost really, really cool. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully this kind of broke down maybe an element that you're missing as you're learning um, the PVP rotations, as you're learning the maps, you're missing this element and the ability to really perform plays confidently, whether it's a slow play or whether you're trying to move really, really quickly. Hopefully this video helped and equipped you with some knowledge to kind of go out there and make some cool plays in Escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Like we said before, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord community is an awesome place to be. We have over 6,000 members in there. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see you all on the next one.